throughout the 20th and 21st century, there have been events w which have impacted our country. Uh, let me give you just a few. The start of World War I, June 1914. The Great Depression, 1929. The start of World War II, September 1939. Pearl Harbor, 1941. The atomic bomb dropped, August 1945. The assassination of John F. Kennedy, 1963. The Civil Rights Act, 1964. The assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., 1968. The fall of the Berlin Wall, 1989. The year America was attacked, September the 11th, 2001. And then who could forget COVID, 2020. Of course, there's been many other events that have impacted not only this nation, but the world as a whole as well. On July the 20th, 1969, American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin became the first human beings to ever land on the moon. It was about six and a half hours later that Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. When he stepped out, he uttered these now famous words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Richard Nixon, who was the president of the United States at that time, said this about the moon landing, and I quote, The planting of human feet upon the moon is the greatest event in human history. Well, with all due respect, President Nixon, I believe the greatest event in human history is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The infinite God-man from the dead after dying on the cross is our substitute. For if Jesus had just come to earth, lived a normal lifespan, and died a regular death without having been raised from the dead three days later, showing that the Father had accepted his sacrifice for us, then we would still be hopeless, hopeless sinners, separated from a holy God, and on our way to eternal hell. The resurrection is a foundational doctrine in which we stand. Paul, an, an apostle of Jesus, understood this when he wrote, Now, I want to make clear for you, brothers and sisters, the gospel that I preach to you, that you received and on which you stand and by which you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I pass on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to, to Cephas, uh, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, as though to one born at the wrong time, he appeared to me also. Now that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul writes intensively about the resurrection. It is the resurrection of Jesus that sets Christianity apart from all the other major religions of the world. Neither Buddha nor Muhammad or nor Confucius ever claimed to be God, but Jesus did. And not only that, when Buddha, Muhammad, and Confucius died, they were buried in the ground, and their bodies are still in the ground today. But not Jesus. The day that Jesus was raised from the dead is the day lives were changed. 
It was the day the resurrection power of God would be offered to the disciples, which transformed them from men who were intimidated and afraid to, to men of courage and boldness. The power of the resurrection is what the Apostle Paul desired to experience when he wrote that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. The resurrection is the second most powerful event that has ever happened. It had the power to change history, and my friends, it has the power to change your life. Now, Paul said, I want to know the power of the resurrection. That same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is available to change your life. It is. What is the power of the resurrection? It is the power to cancel your past sins. What is a sin? A sin is the result of not following the desires of God. But the power of the resurrection cancels your past sins. Now, when I say cancel, I'm not talking about denying the past and saying it never happened. That's lying. I'm talking about canceling, which means to eliminate the punishment due because of our sins. Or in other words, to do away with. Have you ever been halfway through a project and Wish you could start over. I have several times. But a sad fact is some people feel that way about their life. Some say things like, I've made so many mistakes. Or, I, I wish I could go back and redo that. Listen, failures and problems and bad decisions. We all have them. And everybody has regrets. Everyone. You know why? Because nobody's perfect. The Bible says we all fall short. And we are in the same boat. Yet some people, they just can't let go of their past. And because of not letting go, they allow the past to control their present. They continue going through life, if only. Some even believe that they've messed up so bad that they're going to have to pay for their mistake for the rest of their life. Now, yes, there may be some things that we have done in our past that we must deal with the consequences. But God says it is unnecessary for you to go around with this on your back. We shouldn't be carrying all this garbage around on our shoulders. After all, it was Jesus who said, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Not only does he offer us rest, but he also forgives us our sins. Paul writes, Having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, and which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it, to the cross. God knows the things that you have done and that I have done. And he knows the things that, well, we've all done. You can't hide anything from him because he knows. But the cool thing is he, doesn't come, he didn't come to this earth to rub your nose in it. He came to rub it out. He didn't come to condemn you. He came to forgive you and, and change you. But God demonstrates his own love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved through him, John writes in chapter 3. Because of the resurrection, there is a power that can cancel your past. It is the power to overcome your problems. Here's a very unpleasant fact. Everyone has them. You've got them. I've got them. 
It's part of life. And if you don't have any problems, I'm going to ask you to check your pulse. <laughs> However, one of our biggest questions is simply, what do we do with our problems? Most of the time, we, we try to solve them on our own. We, we try to figure out on our own strength, on our own power. Well, we know God is out there, and we've been told that he, he wants to help us, but we just, well, we just don't want to trust. How often do we say, and even sometimes do things, so people will think that deep down inside, it's okay. We've got it all together. It, it kind of reminds me of the man who, who fell off the cliff, and as he was falling, he, he was searching to grab something, and he, he grabbed a hold of a bush sticking out from the ledge. It was about 500 feet from the top, and, and looking down, he had about another 500 feet. So he began to pray, God, please help me. I'm going to depend on you. Then he heard a voice that said, trust me. Let go of the bush, and I will catch you. And the man cried out, is there anybody else up there? You see, we do that. If you want God to help you through your problems, then you must totally trust him. I, I read a book a while back called, If You Want to Walk on the Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. If you want God to help you to overcome your problems, then you must turn it over to him and trust him. It was Paul who wrote, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Just as it is written, For thy sake we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced, Paul says, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you put your life in God's hands and you rely on the power of the resurrection, nothing can destroy you. Nothing. You see, that's the message of the resurrection. No matter how dark the situation is, God can turn it around. No situation is hopeless. God loves to turn crucifixions into resurrections. And the same power that enabled Jesus Christ to rise from the dead will allow you to overcome your problems. It is the power to change your life. The fact is, God uses a two-step process to change us. When we understand our need for a Savior and we surrender to Him as Lord and Savior, we follow through in obedience by dying to ourselves in the waters of baptism. In the New Testament letter we call John, we read, Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed, Jesus said, that I said this to you. You must be born again. Being born again is starting over, as Paul has stated it. You become a, a, a new person from the inside out. 
Paul writes, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. <clears throat> Listen closely. It's not a new leaf, but a new life. God gives to us a new life. He has done his part. Then we must follow through with the second part. And the second part is to continue to grow in knowledge and understanding of God and his word. Paul again writes, You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Paul also wrote, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Listen, don't let the world squeeze you into a mold, but allow God to reshape you so that you are transformed. Now, I'm not talking about the, the power of positive thinking. I'm talking about allowing God to be in your thoughts, which causes you to, to take action. Remember, what you genuinely believe will affect how you behave. However, there is one thing that can keep you from changing. You want to know what it is? It's you. It's you. It's not making an effort or doing it with false pretense. God doesn't call us to be perfect. He, he calls us to be obedient. He calls us to, to do something and allow him to do the rest. But he can't do it unless you get up and do something. I've heard many things such as, I, I'm going to get serious about being a Christian. I, I'm going to turn my life around one of these days. I'm going to start going to church more. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, one of these days. Are you aware that when NASA sends a rocket into space, that most of the fuel in a rocket is used up? in the first hundred yards. You see, it takes a tremendous amount of energy and, and thrust to get the rocket off the launching pad. And the hardest thing for you is to take that first step in obedience. Now, I could stand here all day and, and say to you that Jesus Christ can cancel your past. He, he can help you overcome your problems. And, and he can change your life. And you could simply leave saying. One of these days. John Stott suggests perhaps the transformation of the disciples of Jesus. Is the greatest evidence of all for the resurrection. It was the resurrection which transformed Peter's fear into courage and James' doubt into faith. It was the resurrection which changed the, the Sabbath into Sunday and the Jewish remnant into the Christian church. It was the resurrection which changed Saul the Pharisee into Paul the Apostle and turned his persecution into preaching. That same power is still available today. The power of the resurrection to cancel your past, overcome your problems, and change your life. Now, I started off this morning talking about space flight of the Apollo 11 with Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Did you know that there were people back then in 1969 that said, it never happened. There, there were some back then who said it was a stunt to get the people to believe and trust in the government. It is amazing that with all the people who were alive in Jerusalem 
that could have refuted the claim of Jesus' resurrection. None of them did. Rather, their verdict was unanimous. They all saw Jesus alive after he was dead and laid in that tomb. They all could and did attest to the fact that Jesus died on the cross, was buried on the third day, rose from the grave. However, just like you can find people who refute the evidence of the moon landing, there are people who have attempted to take a stand against the truth of the resurrection. With both of these historical facts, there is adequate evidence that they each occurred. So, there you have it. The one event in all humanity's existence that has changed the course of human history. A little boy and his father was driving down a country road on a beautiful spring afternoon. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a bumblebee flew into the car window. Since the little boy was de deathly allergic to bee stings, he, he became petrified. He began to, to thrash around and cry out, and his father quickly reached out, grabbed the bee, squeezed it in his hand, and then released it. But as soon as he let it go, the, the young boy became frantic once again, and it buzzed by the little boy. The father sensed his son's terror, and once again he reached his hand out, but this time he pointed to his hand, and there stuck in the middle of his palm, in the skin, was the stinger of the bee. You see this, he asked his son. You don't need to be afraid anymore. I've taken the sting for you. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Every resurrection, we celebrate the fact that the tomb is empty. Death has lost. Satan and sin are conquered. Today is the day that could change your life life. Let's pray. Oh Lord God, we thank you for this day. A beautiful day, a gorgeous day, an awesome day, a day that, that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That power that raised him from the grave, Lord, is available to us today to, to cancel our past, to help us to overcome our problems. And, and Lord God, to live free and fully for you. So I pray, O oh Lord, on this resurrection day, that those who've never responded to you will respond this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you, have you responded to the call of God on your life? Have you followed through with a biblical plan of salvation? Confessing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Have you repented of your sins? Turned away from things that lead you away from God? Have you turned away from them and ran to him with your arms open? Because he has his arms open waiting on you. Have you surrendered your life? to the waters of baptism, to die to yourself, to, to rise, to walk a new life? If not, why not today? Find someone that you can trust, that, that knows the Bible, and you, that can share with you. Follow through with what God is calling you on this resurrection day. May you experience the day that lives were changed. God bless.